Well, if you've been following along all this time with our off-grid upgrades to our 2003 uh, Winnebago Class A motorhome, then you know we've got our lithium battery bank all configured, our 800 amp hours of uh, lithium batteries. We've got our inverter installed. All the wiring down there is, uh, is hooked up and, and good to go. So we're down to the last uh, step in this process, which is to get these uh, solar panels all connected to the rest of the system. Now, if you want to see how we mounted these solar panels, go check out the video when I did the uh, install on these, but uh, they're not hooked up yet. We've got 1700 watts of uh, solar up here on the roof, these large uh, industrial panels, and I need to find a nice route to take them down through the refrigerator uh, vent over here and down to the basement of the RV and I'll show you how I'm going to make some connections up here on the roof uh, before we take it down into the basement and connect the charge controllers to the rest of the system. So I better get started. I'm going to start by uh, replacing some of the MC4 connectors that are on some of these panels that are a little bit worn and then we'll get some cables run down through the roof and down into the basement. I removed the old uh, little solar panel that uh, came with the RV and I, I actually put these uh, T-track down here and I'm going to use it as a nice little mounting surface and as well as you know it's going to be a great place to just mount some antennas and stuff that need a place to live up here on the roof. There's the bottom of the refrigerator there, and next to it, we've got an open space.
so now I've got all the uh, all the solar cable run to this point here and I've also got the uh, the cable running from inside the RV coming out the refrigerator vent here and the next step is to is to get them all connected together and I'm gonna do that through this uh, this box I put together and it's got this little uh, this little junction box inside where I can easily uh, connect each cable in here and then uh, decide how I want to join them together to connect to the cables going down into the RV. Now there's some uh, advantages for doing it this way. First of all, it's the same uh, approach I took on the Class C and it worked out really well, made it really easy to maintain. But also, I only need to run the cables from the solar panels once and everything runs to this box here. And then from there on, if I want to make any changes to the system, I just redo some connections here in the box and, uh, and that's all I need to do. I don't need to run any new cable or anything like that. Another benefit is that I can use different cable from the solar panel to this box than I use from the box down into the RV. For example, uh, this uh, solar cable is really got a thick insulation on it. I mean, they're both 10 gauge cable, but this is rated for outside use. It's going to put up with a lot of uh, UV stuff and sun and heat and temperature changes and just last for a long time outside. Whereas this uh, cable that I have running down into the RV is more rated for inside use. This is a lot easier to work with. And the last uh, reason is that, you know, once everything's all set up in here, I can easily test things. So since all the solar panels are terminated in this box, if I wanted to uh, test the voltage or current or anything on individual panels or sets of panels, I can just take those measurements right here on top of these uh, connectors. And I don't have to pull apart any MC4 connectors or anything like that. So, so yeah, I, I like this setup. I'm also going to use some uh, ferrules. So these are just little metal sleeves that I'm going to crimp on to the end of each cable. And, you know, I've got a, a crimper for that. Oh, not this one. <laughs> these 10 ones, I got uh, 10 gauge ones. I had this nice little one. Just creates a nice little way to, to insert and into these little square clamps in here. And they make a pretty good connection. So. Let's go ahead and get this all wired up. Front, right. All right, well, I was able to get everything uh, wired up uh, here up on the roof, and I got some white wire loom that I had also and wrapped all the cables in that. Sorry, I'm having a hard time speaking because it just got freezing today, <laughs> but we'll make it through this. But I want to show you uh, what's inside here. I got everything mounted down to the uh, to the racks and 
and everything connected up here in the box. So let me crack it open and I'll show you how everything's wired. Okay, so on this side here, we've got our uh, front two panels going into this uh, set of four uh, connectors here. And then coming out the other side, we've got uh, those cables just one to one heading down into the RV. And then the two uh, rear panels are going into these four. And then on the other side, we've got our internal wires heading down into the RV. So pretty basic, uh, pretty easy. Uh, there are uh, two spares right now, so if I ever wanted to wire up something else, I've got two additional uh, bus connectors there. And like I said, the nice thing is, is when I want to test stuff, I can just put a meter on these uh, on these little connections on the top, these screws, and then it'll give me uh, voltage readings, and I can even do current readings across uh, these connections when I want to troubleshoot or uh, just test the panels. So pretty convenient to have everything right here. Now I was also able to get the uh, the internal cables uh, wired up to the four circuit breakers that are going to control each of those uh, charge controller inputs. And it was dark when I did this, so I just filmed part of it. That should wrap it up for the exterior part of getting the panels hooked up. Uh, hopefully the majority of the rest of this stuff is going to be inside uh, where it's a bit warmer. Well, you might be wondering, you know, why is he crawling around in the kitchen? Well, let me go through uh, what I have going on here and maybe it'll make sense. Uh, so I, I decided not to install the charge controllers and all the other solar related wiring in that compartment below. It was getting a little crowded in there and I kind of liked the look that it was having where it was kind of all hidden so I wanted to keep that and not just clutter it up. I decided instead to uh, to actually install all of that gear right above that compartment uh, underneath the kitchen cabinets. Most of the Victron stuff's going to be kind of hidden and out of view this time which is kind of unusual <laughs> and it turns out that uh, right here is actually where the uh, the converter charger was located. I removed it didn't need it anymore but it left this open area. And in fact, there's an open area all the way underneath this cabinet, all the way across. I decided to just uh, utilize that space for, for the solar stuff. And this is where all of the uh, solar charge controllers are located. And it's actually a nice compartment that's under this uh, hidden floor space here. It turns out that this whole space is actually pretty well ventilated. You know, you'd think that it was going to be kind of trapped in there and and you know it's not going to get a lot of air but this whole area is open underneath here like I said the the converter charger was under there and it was generating heat and uh, ventilating and keeping cool up effectively so what I've done is actually drilled some more holes through these little walls here for cable runs and for more ventilation that I can attach uh, some vent fans if I need to Right now I got the solar cable coming in that runs to the solar charge controllers. I need to wire those up here. And then the output of the solar charge controller is uh, actually going to go to this little guy here. It's a fuse uh, block. Kind of similar to the link system I suppose. I mean it's just a really inexpensive uh, version but it kind of accomplishes a similar uh, function without all the automation. All the outputs of the solar charge controller will go here and then out these very thick one aught cables. You know, there's potentially a couple hundred amps that could be running uh, from the solar, so I needed to uh, make sure that I accounted for that with the cabling. Finally, there's just a whole bunch of this uh, Victron communication gear. All of these uh, charge controllers have to be connected to the Servo GX, so I have these VE Connect and VE USB uh, converter cables to, uh, to make sure that I have a place to connect all of those. And, th and there's enough cable here to reach between the charge controllers and the servo, which is actually right below here. This may look a little confusing right now. It's just a kind of a jumble of cables and mismatched stuff, but I assure you it's gonna work once everything's connected. 
So if you want a clear picture of how I'm going to connect it, be sure to go check out my my wiring diagram that I put together for this and download that. It may just uh, help you kind of visualize what's going on here. Well, I'm just going to hunker down now and uh, just start crawling in and out of here, making connections, and uh, we'll get everything hooked up, and then we'll circle back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now there's only one uh, change that I had to make to the to the cabling setup here, and that was to move the solar uh, cutoff switch from here to here. And the reason for that was because I just came up a little short on the one aught cable. So yeah, putting it here actually is a pretty good spot. Everything runs up through the floor right here, and, and all the stuff is uh, installed and mounted right above this compartment. Yeah, everything came together pretty well, fired up the first time, and uh, everything's hooked up. Uh, to the servo here, I'm actually even able to uh, to monitor everything online now, which is really cool. Now I'll uh, go through a lot of the detailed settings and stuff about the servo and the charge controllers in another video. Uh, but right now, I'm satisfied with the way that everything works. One thing that you'll have to do with uh, multiple charge controllers, though, is to set it up so they all are part of the same uh, VE network so that they can uh, synchronize charging but it works really well i've done it with uh, you know several charge controllers before on the class c so did the same type of setup here until next time take care and i'll see you later